making my way through Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking. This is Jamie and Julia. I'm Jamie. Hello. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. So I am in the soup chapter today making up some cabbage soup. Soup au chou. Garbert. The hell's that? Garbert pronunciation, is a thick French stew traditionally based on cabbage. This fine and uncomplicated peasant soup is a comforting dish for a, oh, a cold winter day. This is a cold winter day. Let's make it. Potatoes, one potato, two potato, three potato. Floor. Of course, peel up my potatoes. Some regular everyday boiling potatoes. I'm using up some Yukon Gold today. Quarter these up. Two potatoes equals double the amount that I need. I'm gonna monitor the situation and add the potato as I see fit. I don't think having too much potato in a cabbage soup is such a bad thing. One pound of bacon. There's a special mention here as to like what kind of pork I should be using. It says, in the Basque country, a good cabbage soup must always include a chunk of lard croissants. <laughs> I'm working on rolling those R's. They're slightly rancid and much appreciated salt pork. Otherwise, the dish is considered to lack distinction. Well, I do not have rancid pork. So I gotta use just regular bacon. And she said one and a half pounds of lean salt pork, smoked unprocessed ham, or lean bacon. I'm just using bacon, people. And this is just one pound because that's what the package came in. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. And if I'm lacking in the bacon department just by half a pound, I make up for it in the potato department. So everything balances itself out. It's even Steven over here. The biggest pot I got. All right, so this is five pints. Well, this isn't, but I'm gonna add five pints or 2.37 liters of water. In with the water, I'm gonna add in the potatoes and the bacon, uncut. Bring that to a boil. Just gonna take some of the potato out. I added too much potato, so two pounds of roughly sliced up cabbage. I'm gonna roughly chop up very roughly slick. So I got eight black peppercorns here, and I'm gonna dust off old Morty here, uh, the mortar and pestle, add the peppercorns, and away we go. Nice. Two medium-sized onions that I've peeled and cut off the stem, so I'm gonna keep them whole. And I need to stud with two cloves. Each. Uh... Do I have cloves? Okay, thank God. Whole cloves. And I need, it's a snow plow. Hear that? I have a feeling I just like poke, it's like stud poke cloves in them. Cookbook's not clear, but I'm gonna add two cloves, like each. It's two small carrots or three like very small. And I gotta, Quarter of these. Three stalks of celery that I need to just slice, it says. I think it just means this. So I've been using this to mash up my garlic recently, uh, but I'm gonna try a different method today, which is just crushing the garlic up with my knife, and then, uh, well, here we go. Some salt on top, and mash it up with my knife. Just gonna repeat that until it turns into a paste. And then I'm just gonna do one little courtesy mince. Okay, I would say that is mashed. All right, so now I got two turnips. This is my first time ever using turnips ever in my entire life. In fact, I don't think I've ever held a turnip before. And uh, they weren't labeled in the grocery store, so I had to guess that this was even a turnip because I haven't actually, well, I didn't even really know what it looked like, to be honest. I know what a turnip is. I call people that all the time, but I had never actually used this root vegetable. You peel this up. It kind of smells like horseradish. Is horseradish made out of turnips? Horseradish, oh, it is its own thing. Okay, and then quarter your horse, your uh, f***ing, your, um, your turnip. Quarter it, okay, quartered. So I just started the boil on this yet again, because I had to prep all the vegetables, so I had to stall this for a second. 
but I'm ready to add everything. Cabbage goes in, turnips go in, you turn up. On second thought, I feel like these turnips are way too big for soup. Cut the turnips down to eights. Onions started with the cloves, full house, carrots and celery, the mashed garlic, crushed peppercorn. Do I have twine or string? Or Six sprigs of parsley that I tied up with some string. Uh, one bay leaf. I need the string easily accessible. Oh, maybe I should tie the friggin' bay leaf in with the parsley. I'll just kind of loop it in there so it's together. Half a teaspoon of margar margaram. Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of thyme. Boop. Okay, mix that all around. I want to make sure I'm adding enough salt too. So get some salt in there. Just give it some salt. Lid goes on partially and simmer for one and a half to two hours. So this is uh, 15 minutes before I'm about to serve this. I'm adding in white cannellini beans that I just grabbed from a, like a can. Say goodbye to the parsley. I'm taking it out a bit early because it's falling apart. Don't want it littering my soup. That bay leaf is as good as gone at this point. Hope I don't choke on it. God damn it, parsley. I found the bay leaf. This is kind of an annoying task, but now I gotta take the meat out of here because I have to cut it up into smaller pieces, but Begs the question, why didn't I just do that at the beginning? I'll tell you why, it's because the book said not to do anything like that. I think that's all of it. So with the bacon out of the soup. Oh, thank God for that. That thing has never been so clutch. Cut the bacon up into these serving pieces. Skim it, skim it. So I've tried to skim as much fat as I could off the top of this thing, but uh, honestly, it's been tough to find because there's just so many items of food in here. Honestly, it's kind of unskimmable. Add the meat back in there. And lastly, the season to taste. Salt, a little pepper. And just a little more salt. Two full hours. We are ready for the soup. Soup is looking good. The only thing is I gotta pick around these ginormous onions. Okay, that ought to do it. Order up! And it was in that moment of time that he was finally happy. This is the nor'easter going on outside. It's a bomb cyclone you know, full of snow, wind, it's freezing. And I just wanted a bowl of soup. And that was the most perfect bowl of soup to have in this very moment right now. This fine and uncomplicated peasant soup is a comforting dish for a cold winter day. That's it, that's all. Thanks all for watching. Shout out to these guys, my Patreon supporters supporting the show. If you want more information on that, there's a link in the description. This is Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir.